So in this video, I'll discuss another phenomenon that supports the idea that particles can also have a wave nature. So this phenomenon is called the electron diffraction. Okay? So ano muna yung diffraction? Diffraction is the redistribution of a wave when it encounters an obstacle. So pwede nating makuha yung diffraction pattern niya kapag naglagay tayo ng sensor after nung disturbance or after nung obstacle. Okay? So meron tayong undisturbed wave dito. Okay? Tapos uh, in-interact natin siya dun sa wall or sa obstacle na merong isang single slit. Okay? So yung slit na yan, maliit na opening yan para makadaan yung wave natin. So ang mangyayari, dadaan siya dun sa slit at maridistribute yung kanyang wave energy. So kapag ka meron tayong sensor, depende sa kung saan tumama yung ating wave, okay? magkakaroon tayo ng particular di diffraction pattern na tulad nito. Okay? So this is the diffraction pattern for a single slit disturbance or obstacle. Okay? So kapag naman double slit, Okay, makikita tayo ng wall na may dalawang maliit na slit. Tapos, nag-pass through tayo ng wave doon. Makikita tayo ng ganitong klase ng redistribution. So, since dalawang wave sources na yan, magkakaroon tayo ng mga constructive tsaka destructive interferences. Kaya makikita tayo ng ganitong klaseng uh, diffraction pattern. So, if you look closely at the diffraction pattern, makikita kayo ng mga peaks. Okay, so those peaks represent the waves that made it through the slits. While the throws... Okay, are the waves that were cancelled out because of destructive interference. Okay? So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng interference. Meron tayong constructive at destructive. Kapag constructive, the waves add up. So, madadagdagan yung ating amplitude. Kapag ka naman destructive, nagka-cancel out yung amplitudes nila. So, nadi-disappear yung wave. Okay? So, it's uh, exclusive sa waves. Yung uh, destructive at constructive interference. Or so we know. Kasi... C.J. Davison, L.H. Germer, and G.P. Thompson discovered that electrons exhibit the same pattern. Okay? So, makikita natin dito na meron tayong electron beam. So, an electron beam is a beam um, spraying electrons. Okay? Electrons are particles. So, kapag ka pinas through mo sila sa double slit, nag exhibit sila ng same diffraction pattern. So, electrons are seemingly diffracting. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, if electrons are capable of diffraction, electrons can exhibit as waves. Okay? So, ito yung uh, parang hallmark experiment ng quantum mechanics. So, if particles can act as waves and waves can act as particles, so, pwede nating sabihin na yung wave and particle na entity, parang iisang entity lang sila na may dalawang in-exhibit na manifestations. Okay, so this is uh, one of the fundamental assumptions of quantum mechanics. So at the macroscopic level, hindi natin siya na observe kasi distinct ang waves at particles. Pero sa microscopic level, nagkakaroon tayo ng parang blending ng particle at wave nature. Okay? So ang ginawa nila, inexploit nila tong idea na to. So this, this discovery has led to the formulation of the wave equation. So since pwede natin i-treat yung electrons as waves, hindi na natin kailangang i-determine yung positions ng electrons dun sa atom. Okay? Pwede na tayong mag-describe ng isang function kung saan dumadaan yung electron. By treating the electron as a wave, mas madadalian tayong mag uh, parang graph ng function ng, di ng uh, mga positions ng electrons around the atom. Okay? So that's the wave function. So the wave function describes the area around the atom where the electron resides. Okay? So if you do that, by treating the um, electron as a wave, mas convenient yun. Okay? Kaysa, i-determine natin kung nasaan yung position ng electron at any point in time dun sa atom. Mas mahirap yun. Kasi, kailangan nating mag-predict uh, ng mga possible trajectory ng electron. Okay? Mas mahirap i-treat ang electron as a particle kaysa sa wave kapag nandun siya sa atom. Okay? So, a wave equation was derived by Irvin Schrödinger. So, this is the long version of the Schrödinger's equation. So, it's a um, partial differential equation describing the energy that can be derived from the wave function. So, kapag ka nakita mo yung electron sa isang specific space around the atom, pwede mong ma-solve yung energy ng electron na yun. Yun yung sinasabi ng Schrödinger equation. Okay? So, the short version is this. So, this is the Hamiltonian operator. Okay. So, ang ibig sabihin ng operator, yun yung something na ino-operate mo dun sa wave function or something na parang ginagawa mo dun sa wave function para makuha mo yung energy ng wave function na yun. So, h bar psi 
okay, is equal to E of psi. So, this E is the energy. Kapag ka inoperate mo yung Hamiltonian dun sa wave function. So, that's how this Schrodinger equation is used. So, magbibigay ka ng wave function. If you input that to the Hamiltonian operator, makakuha ka ng energy value. Okay? So, that's how the quantum mechanical equation works. So, this psi is called the wave function. Okay? So, wave functions describe the area around the atom where your electron resides at specific energies. Okay? So, it describes the space taken by the electron of a certain energy level n around the nucleus. Okay? So, it is easier to describe the electron as a wave than a particle. So, nasabi ko na to. Due to the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So, ano Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? So, at the microscopic level, may hirapan na tayong mag-distinguish ng wave and particle natures. Kasi, ito na nga, due to the experiments, yung particles yung nag-exhibit ng wave nature while your waves exhibit particle nature. So, meron lang tayong mga experiments na pwedeng gawin at certain precisions. Okay? If you want information about the particle-ness of a particle or a wave-ness of a wave. So, the particle nature is described by its position while the wave nature is described by the momentum. So, this describes the limit of which we can measure those properties. Okay? So, kapag ka microscopic level na, mahihirapan na tayong mag-determine ng position because your particle is acting like a wave. Mahihirapan na rin tayong mag-determine ng specific momentum kasi yung particle mo or yung wave mo, nag act siya as a particle. So, mas maganda na na-problem na lang natin yung position kaysa sa momentum. Hindi na natin kailangan malaman kung nasaan yung electron at any period in time. Ang kailangan na lang natin malaman is ano ba yung energy ng electron na yun at kung saan ba siya laging nagre-reside around the atom. So, mas madaling idea yun kaysa alamin natin kung nasaan siya at every period in time doon sa atom. Okay? So, that's due to the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Furthermore, it is also more convenient to describe the wave function using the spherical coordinate system. Kasi, according to the Bohr model, your electrons move around the atom. So, since natural motion niya yung mga circular or spherical motion, mas convenient na gamitin natin yung spherical coordinate system para mas simple lang yung ating mga wave function equations. Okay? So, alam naman natin dun sa ating rectangular coordinate system that we have the x, the y, and the z-axis. While dito sa spherical coordinate system, we have the r or the radial axis, we have the polar axis, and we have the azimuthal axis. So, yung radial axis, it describes the distance between the center of the sphere to the point of interest, which is the psi. Yung ating polar ay yung... Uh, angle with respect to the polar line. So, that's the line that um, passes through the sphere vertically. So, yung ating easy mutal naman, line din siya, pero it passes through the sphere horizontally. Okay? So, this is the angle for the polar coordinate, and this is the angle for the easy mutal coordinate. Okay? So, using the system, tapos using the wave function, we can use the Schrodinger's equation to derive the so-called quantum numbers. So, makukuha natin yung mga quantum numbers if we solve for the different wave functions using the Schrodinger's equation. Okay? So, ano yung mga wave functions na yun? So, yung mga wave functions kasi na yun, mag-a-assign ka ng different va values of r, theta, and phi. And you should make sure na it's allowed. It's the according to the Niels Bohr's uh, assumptions on angular momentum. Okay? So, kapag ka okay yun, mag-derive mo yung proper na values ng ating quantum numbers. So, we have three quantum numbers. We have the n, the l, and the m sub l. So, these are the spatial quantum numbers na tinatawag kasi it describes the space okay, occupied by your electron around the atom. So, what is n? So, n is the principal quantum number. So, n can have integer values. So, it can have the value of 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Hindi siya pwede magkaroon ng value na 0. Okay? So, it describes the energy associated with the distance of the electron from the atom center. So, kapag mas mataas yung n, mas mataas yung distance niya from the center of the atom. Okay? So, L is the azimuthal quantum number. So, familiar siya because of the azimuthal coordinate. So, this quantum number describes the energy associated with the variation of your wave function with respect to the azimuth. So, ano yung azimuth? Again, azimuth is the angle. Okay, ito yung ating uh, projection. So, ito yung ating pole. Ito yung ating azimuth. So, this is the azimuthal angle. 
Okay? So kapag nagbabary yung wave function mo with respect to the azimuth, makikita natin yun through the azimuthal quantum number. So kapag pinroject ko siya like this, okay? So ipoproject lang natin siya like this para makita natin yung variation more clearly. So kapag walang variation, so bilog lang siya, hindi mo hindi ka makita ng mga changes dun sa distance, okay? Dun sa r kahit baguhin mo yung phi. So that's for L equals 0 or the S, okay? The S quantum number. So kapag ka naman ganito, meron tayong single variation from uh, this point to this point tapos babalik lang siya dati sa dati from this point to the next one. Okay? So that's L equals 1. That signifies a P quantum number. So dito naman meron tayong dalawang variation from here to here tapos from here to here. Tapos babalik lang siya sa dati kapag ka pupunta ka dun sa 90 degrees. Okay? So that's for L equals 2 or the D quantum number. So, dito naman sa susunod, we have 1 variation, and then next is 2, next is 3. Pagpunta nyo dun sa 90 degree angle. Okay? So, that's L equals 3, or the F quantum number. Okay? So, punta naman tayo dito sa M sub L, or the orbital magnetic quantum number. So, the orbital magnetic quantum number can have values from 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, up to plus minus L. So, by the way, yung ating L... Okay, it can have values from 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1 naman. Okay, that's for the azimuthal quantum number. Sa magnetic quantum number, yung ating uh, m sub l, pwede siya magkaroon ng values na from 0 to negative and positive l. Okay? So, it describes the number of orbitals available for each subshell. So, ano bang pinagkaiba ng subshell sa orbital? So, if you have the Bohr model, okay, these are the subshells. Okay? So, ito yung mga tinatawag nating subshells. So, yung orbitals, those are the uh, wave functions inside each subshell. Kaya yung ibang mga subshell natin, may ibang capacity. So, for example, yung unang subshell natin, dalawa lang yung pwede. Okay? Yung n equals 2 natin, that's 2s2, then 2p6, di ba? Pwede, pwede ang 8 electrons. So, susunod, mas maraming electrons yung pwede. Kasi, may mga orbitals inside those subshells. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng m sub l. So, m sub l describes the number of orbitals available for each subject. So, this is also confirmed through the Zeeman effect. So, kapag ka nag-apply ka kasi ng magnetic or electric field sa isang orbital subshell, lalabas yung kanyang mga magnetic quantum numbers or yung mga orbitals inside those subshells. Okay, so ipapakita ko to dun sa susunod na page. So, we have an example for the L equals 1 subshell. We have three orbitals. So, we have the P sub Z, P sub Y, and the P sub X orbitals. So, for P sub Z, we have M sub L equals 0. P sub Y, we have M sub L equals negative 1. And P sub X is equal to uh, M sub L, which is equal to positive 1. Okay? So, now we have the spin quantum number. So, this quantum number cannot be found in the solutions for your Schrodinger equation of your wave function. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya involved dun sa Schrodinger equation. Okay? It is actually the property of your electron. That's the electron's intrinsic spin. Okay? Yung principal, azimuthal, tsaka magnetic quantum numbers nyo, yun yung mga spatial quantum numbers. They are describing the space occupied by your electrons. Okay? So the spin quantum number describes the intrinsic spin or the property of the electron itself. Okay? So each orbital can hold at most two electrons of opposite spins. So, as long as opposite yung spin nila, pwede silang mag-occupy ng same orbital. Okay? So, yung orbital na yun can have the same uh, n, l, and m sub l. So, as uh, as long as opposite yung spin, okay, ma-occupy nila yun both. Kapag same yung spin nila, hindi yun pwede. So, ang tawag doon ay Pauli's exclusion principle. So, Pauli's exclusion principle states that no two electrons around an atom can have the same set of quantum numbers. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, you can have the same n, l, and m sub l, pero dapat opposite yung spins nyo. Okay? So, ang spins ay pwedeng plus one half and negative one half. So, kung pareho kayo ng n, l, tsaka m sub l, dapat kung yung isa ay plus one half, yung isa ay negative one half para ma-occupy nyo yung same orbital. So, that's the Pauli's exclusion principle. Okay? So, this intrinsic spin was discovered through the Stern-Gerlach experiment. So, ito na yung mga diagrams natin. So, for the Zeeman effect, 
it describes existence of your magnetic quantum numbers. Kasi, for example, this 2P, kapag ka sinobject mo siya sa magnetic field, na split yung 2P into its magnetic quantum numbers. Yung ating 2PX, 2PY, tsaka 2PZ. So, na-discover yun ni Zeeman. Yung Stern-Gerlach experiment naman, if you ionize the electron of an atom, okay, merong equal chance na makakuha ka ng spin-up tsaka spin-down na electron. Even for the same atom. Okay? So, laging 50-50 yan. Laging 50% yung plus, 50% yung minus. That's how the electron can conserve its spin um, statistics. Okay? Hindi ka makakita ng uh, ganitong experiment na hindi 50-50 yung plus at saka minus one half spin ng electron. Lagi silang 50-50. Okay? That's how uh, cool this experiment actually is. Hindi mo talaga madedetermine yung spin ng electron until i-subject mo siya sa magnetic field. Okay? So, that's the Stern-Gerlach experiment. It proves that an electron has an intrinsic spin. Okay? So, therefore, every orbital can occupy a maximum of two electrons. So, bawat isang orbital. So, ang ibig sabihin ng orbital, meron kang N, L, and M sub L na specific. Okay? So, for the S orbital, since zero ang L mo at zero din ang M sub L, isa lang talaga yung kanyang uh, orbital. That's the S. So, the electron capacity for that is 2. Okay? So, for the P orbital, you have um, L equals 1. So, ibig sabihin meron kang M sub L na negative 1, 0, tsaka plus 1. So, meron kang tatlong P orbital. So, that means you have a maximum of 6 electrons na pwede dun sa P orbital mo. Kapag ka naman B orbital, you have L equals 2. So, you have an M sub L of negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. So, ibig sabihin meron kang limang orbitals doon under the D subshell. So, ibig sabihin kung lima yung orbitals, meron kang 10 na electron capacity. So, maximum of 10 electrons ang pwede mong ilagay sa orbital na yan. So, for F, since your F is L equals 3, meron kang negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, meron kang 7 F orbitals. So, meron kang maximum of 14 electrons na pwede mong ilagay sa mga orbitals na yan under this subshell. Okay? So, this is my discussion on the uh, wave nature of electrons and the quantum numbers. So, next video, i-discuss ko na yung electron configuration. Okay?